So I picked up this board. I've been wanting an Amiga CD32 for some time, and there's a lot of really ratty ones that are still a lot of money, and the really nice ones are a lot of money, and somehow I'm not finding the broken, but somehow financially available. What I did find, though, is someone else's project. I picked up this board, which is a CD32 board that has been recapped, and apparently the RAM replaced, but all they're seeing is a black screen. I'm not foolish enough to think that I could repair it, but I figured that no matter what, this was worth the gamble, because if this board is completely hosed, there are still a lot of great chips on this board. A fully functional Alice, fully functional Lisa. Um, we got an Akiko, which I'm just fascinated by. But hey, worst case, this might be some fun. So anyway, here's the board as I received it. One thing I gotta do is find a power supply, and probably I need to write a diagram to even get started. Symptoms are uh, video initializes, but it's black. So, standard Amiga stuff. All right, I'm gonna go find some stuff and let's see what happens. Okay, I found myself some solid stuff. So, we're gonna start by removing the original 3.1 ROM and I have written a 32-bit 27C800 diagram. This may not be on the up and up but I was trying to find a power supply because I didn't think about that because you know my bad. Looking at possibly building one I found out that apparently it's the same connector as a focus a Commodore 15412-1571-1581 power supply and while it may not have all the amperage it needs I'm also not driving the CD-ROM or an expansion card so this is gonna be fine for now while I you know figure out what I'm gonna do long term if this thing works so just for grins, I'm going to power this thing on and see if Diagram does anything at all. All right, so um, Diagram is what we call in the business um, really pissed off. We're going to do a really crappy hand cam here just so you can see. So that tells me two things. One, we are not completely screwed here. CPU is responding. It's reading from the ROM correctly. We probably have a memory issue, is my guess. Uh, but we do also have video output, even if it's not what we want. What we saw there was flashing lights, and when it got to the part where it was actually displaying something, that's where things went horribly wrong. And I do, I am thinking this is probably chip RAM. It's probably sitting right here. However, what I'd really like to do is get this connected to a serial port. First though, I gotta figure out how to connect it to a serial port. Okay, we're back. We got two new wires in here. It turns out the keyboard port or the auxiliary port on the CD32 is also running serial or not quite serial, TTL. So it is running at five volt TTL logic and so luckily I already had a TTL converter for an Arduino project that I did but f unfortunately this is not actually working with my workbench machine in front of me so we have this cable going all the way back to my file server where that is detected so you know go figure but we certainly have enough to get started here we will pop over to terminal And since I doubt this is going to matter, we're going to pull this off. All right, this might be an eye test, but let's boot it up and see what happens. Hey, it works. Okay. Holy address error. Okay. 
Okay, so here's what we know. We know that CPU works, but it's not finding a lot of RAM and it is failing. So we'll shut this off. Hey, you can see me. Isn't that fun? So I did a quick alcohol clean of the board just to make sure. Um, there's some flux residue still, which, you know, I would do that as well, so I get it. But I just wanted to double check, and that looks fine. So I'm looking now, these four RAM chips, um, it's a pretty simple setup for the chip RAM. Um, I'm just quickly going to check levels uh, as they come into these chips, and how I'm going to do that is actually I'm going to look here over at uh, U35. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six. 20 pin chip. So starting with pin nine. Which doesn't light up at all. That's address line one. 19. which doesn't light up at all. 16, which doesn't light up at all. I'm gonna do one more, but we see a pattern here already. One, two, three, four, five, six, which doesn't light up at all. All right, so uh, the input to this chip, we'll start with eight, nine, eight, well, that's an input. And then 18. Yep. 17. Yep. Okay. This is a 74F373. To get a low output requires the inbound data line to be low and then low, high, low, or enables are low. Enable is on 11 and reverse OE is on one. So active low on one. So let's look at one. Active low, it is quite low. And on 11, That is quite active. Does this chip just suck? This never happens to me if this does work. So I used this at U35 to check just as an easy spot to check the inbound data lines for these RAM chips. Um, what I'm seeing here is some pretty obvious nothing coming through. I'm kind of wondering if it's this chip, and so I think that's probably where I'm going to start. So I'm going to go see if I have any of these. Tag team back again. I have ordered a new 74F373, so we're going to go ahead and remove this one. Probably don't even see it. Might even edit this out. Okay, well, that's that anyway. And then, you know, the moment of truth. Hand cam again. Ah, oh, no, that is still power screwed. Well, darn. 
I mean, the real bummer here is the friends we made along the way. No, that's not how it works. So over here, uh, it was 9, 19, 16. So we'll start at 9. Well, that's definitely different. 19. I mean, that's definitely different. So if we pop over to one of these RAM chips, so address line zero is going to be on pin 11. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Man, that looks clean to me. Twelve. Thirteen, fourteen. Fourteen's not real. Fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. So we're still basically the same. So before we did 9, 19. So if we start with 9, I mean, that's better. We were flatlining before. 19. Are all these pins connected? I think I have a bad connection. So this is funny. Just so y'all know, to go ahead and check your work. So, normal boot. Add is there. So I noticed this joint. You're not going to be able to see it, but there's this joint that looks not quite right. But if I place my probe here. I'm going to fix that joint. Try it again. That's incredibly unhelpful. 
but what is helpful is uh, I bet if I look at a screen right now. She ain't pretty, but she's a screen. With that, it's popping the normal ROM. That was interesting. This had a bent pin. I wonder if the whole time it had a bent pin. Okay. Let's see if we can do some Amiga stuff. Well, there you go. So now what? Uh, now I have a motherboard. I can't really do much with a motherboard. So now I'm gonna need the rest of the CD32. So uh, I guess I'm gonna go work on that and I'll see you next time. Happy computing and uh, happy successes.